The 24 to 70 or a standard zoom lens as it's often referred to is one of the less inspiring or less exciting lenses that you can buy, but it's one that I find to be extremely useful and extremely versatile and I always end up getting one regardless of what system or camera system I'm currently shooting on. I want to talk about what makes the Sigma 24 to 70 DGDN f2.8 for Sony E-mount a really great 24 to 70 <laughs> because on the Sony E-mount, there is a lot of competition. There's a lot of options in this range. As I'm making this video on April 26, 2022, Sony is rumored to be announcing their 24 to 70 G Master version two tomorrow. So there'll be even more competition, but I wanna focus on why I feel like this is still one of the best, if not the best options in this range for Sony E-mount, what I particularly like about this lens. I'm gonna be focusing on this lens in terms of video shooting. I will show you some example photos because I don't have a lot of video examples to show you. I've used this lens on a variety of projects, but I don't often get to keep the footage that I shoot. So I only have one video job that I can show you. Before I get into what I like about this lens, I need to address one of the major problems or controversies about this lens. When this first came out, a lot of reviewers, anybody who did any sort of long-term review, noted that it had a tendency to get dust within the front lens element. But I have heard that newer versions of this lens do not suffer from that problem. That Sigma has refined its manufacturing of this lens or changed something, whatever, that solves that issue. Now I've had mine for about eight months and I don't have any dust within the lens element. And I've used it on a variety of shoots, indoors, outdoors, and I've had no problems. So anecdotally, it seems like that might be true, that new versions of this lens have fixed that dust issue. I'd love to know in the comments if anybody's using this lens, if you bought it new in the last year, if you have any issues with dust, or conversely, if you bought it maybe two years ago, whenever it first came out, do you have dust problems? So let me talk about why I picked this one over all the competition and the things that I think it does really well. Number one overall kind of blanket category is price to performance. This is an $1,100 lens, which isn't cheap. Even though it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other budget oriented competition, I feel like it has some features that make that extra couple hundred dollars worth it. Namely is that it's actually 24 to 70 and not a 28 to 70 or 28 to 75. The difference between 24 and 28 is much more dramatic, much more noticeable than the difference between 70 to 75. And if you're only gonna get one lens or one zoom lens, especially just starting out, I think that having that 24 is more valuable than having a 28 to 75. And number two, now that that dust problem has been fixed, I could say that the overall build quality and the perceived quality of this lens is really, really high. It feels like a premium lens, one that competes really well with a Sony G Master, just in terms of build, in terms of materials. Sigma art lenses have been known for a while to have a really nice feel and build, and this one is no exception. It has rubber on the zoom and focus rings in comparison to the Tamron's, which are just plastic. You also get, obviously, an AF-MF switch on here. You get an autofocus lock switch, which is just like those focus hold buttons on Sony lenses. This can be programmed to different functions if you want within the menu. And there's also a, uh, a zoom lock. It also has a gasket on the back to help with dust and moisture. Manually controlling this lens feels really nice. The zoom is a short throw, just like any other photo zoom lens, but it's really smooth. It doesn't have any real sticking points. So just engaging the zoom is nice and easy. So if you wanted to try to get a zoom within a shot, you know, you're doing like a documentary style video or maybe a mockumentary video, then you can do that. I mean, it's not a cinema lens, not a cinema zoom, but it's nice in terms of its action for a photo lens. The focus ring is really smooth. It's nicely damped. You can turn it with a thumb, but it's not, it's not sloppy in any way. There is a negative in terms of manually focusing, but I'll hold off on that until we get to that. Another thing that I really like about this lens is it's got a very close minimum focusing distance, about seven and a half inches, 7.8 inches or 8.8. .8. It's pretty close. The next thing that I really love about this lens is that for video, there's no focus breathing. 
and that is huge. Every other 24 to 70 full frame lens that I've used has had pretty significant focus breathing. The next thing is image quality. Of course, you want every lens that you buy to have good image quality. And for $1,100, you would expect the image quality to be good. And the Sigma doesn't disappoint. Sigma art lenses are known for being sharp. This lens is extremely sharp. Again, I'm focusing on video. So all the examples, both video and photos that I'm showing you are shot on the A7S III, which is only a 12 megapixel camera for photos and around a 10 megapixel camera for video. I'm not sure how sharp the lens is if you're shooting a high res camera like an A7R IV, for instance. Just about everything I'm gonna show you is shot at f2.8. So I have no issue using the lens wide open. In addition to sharpness, I mean, all the renditioning of this lens is really nice. Out of focus areas look good. They're not busy. They're not distracting. And there's not even a whole lot of chromatic aberration. You can find it if you go looking for it, but it's not anything that you'll notice like, oh, I can see chromatic aberration there. All those things basically fit under that initial rubric of price to performance. For an $1,100 lens, you're getting a whole lot of really great features. No focus breathing, very sharp, little chromatic aberration, close minimum focus, nice looking out of focus areas. I don't know what else you could ask for. The last thing that I really love about this lens is just the autofocus performance. I mean, 99% of the time I autofocus with this lens and it works as well as native first party Sony lenses do. Of course, no lens is perfect. So what are some of the cons or some of the things that I don't love about the lens? One of the expectations of shooting with mirrorless cameras is that lenses can be smaller. And that expectation or that promise hasn't always borne out. This is a very typical standard zoom lens. It's very reminiscent of one that you'll find on a DSLR. It's large and it's heavy. The barrel extends when you zoom out. So there hasn't been any real innovation in terms of its size and weight. The next con is it does have an 82 millimeter filter, which again is very standard. So that does require the biggest, most expensive filters. Another con, and this just depends on your preference, is that there's no optical image stabilization. For me, that is not really an issue. For shooting video, I don't like using optical image stabilization unless I'm just trying to get an extremely stable, locked off looking shot. Anytime the camera is moving, I find that OIS is doing more harm than good because it's kind of fighting with the movement of the camera and I don't think it looks natural. And the last major con for this lens, coming back to that focusing ring, is for Sony E-mount in particular, this is an acceleration based manually focusing lens, which I hate. It's not the worst acceleration based manually focusing lens that I've ever used. 